Hi. We're going live. I'm here early as per usual so that um, people can come into the room. But hello, welcome. I'm gonna put on some makeup. We gotta talk about Love After Lockup because this is a good episode. So I'm gonna let people come into the room. For those of you guys who are not watching this live, please check down in the description box to see when the actual live begins so that you don't have to watch my yammering. You know what song I have in my head? I gotta meet in the latest room. Be back real soon. Hi, El Boogie. Hi, uh, Vicky Vale. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Ooh, all the people are here. Ramsterdam, Raven, Laura, Maria. As you guys know, I'm in Vegas, or may or may not know, I'm in Vegas. Yesterday was my birthday. Thank you so much to those of you who told me happy birthday on Instagram. I absolutely appreciated it. I had a great day yesterday. I went to see RuPaul's Drag Race Live in Vegas, which I feel like I have to do a review of it. Like, I gotta give you guys the tea but I had a great time. And today I'm having brunch with a moderator of mine. I think she's on here called Astroidia, but her name is Tiana, cause she's in Vegas. So, oh, Laura, the spa was great. The spa was great. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, so I'm meeting with Tiana today for lunch or brunch, you know, if she can make it. And um, then after that, I'm coming back here to the hotel. Maybe I'll go gamble some more. Maybe I'll gamble tonight. I want to do karaoke tonight at a place called Ellis Island, which is off the strip. Um, which, you know, if you're in Vegas, you're more than welcome to shimmy on by. But in general, I'm okay rolling solo dolo. I find that whenever I like try to meet up with people that at the last minute people get like uncomfortable and then they don't come. So for me, I don't plan on seeing anybody. I'm like, if you come, you come. If you don't, I get it. Oh, there's more comments down here. Hello, hello, hello comments. Thank you, Yazelle. Yeah, so I was here a couple, I was there a couple years ago, uh, you know, pre-pandemic and had a great time and won some money on the, on the Britney Spears slot machine, so. I should be there tonight. And if I, if, you know, now that I drink, it's not gonna be as awkward for me to be at karaoke with a bunch of drunk people. <sighs> this eyeshadow is disappointing. It's blue and it's disappointing. But you know, this is where we're at in life. Tars Talks, hello. Uh, never seen your name before. Okay, Raven, I got you. Hi, Jasmine. 
Glad that you were able to make it. Tars Talks, where are you? So stoked I've been able to make it to your live. Thanks for working the night shift. Thanks to working the night shift. Are, oh, are you saying that you're at home now because you normally would be um, sleeping or something? I don't know. You don't have to tell me where you are. I'm just asking, like, trying to figure out, like, what do you mean the night shift? Are you at work now? So you're in Europe? Okay, no more makeup. I don't even know what happened. Like, I was just like, let me just put on a little bit of something, and then it just devolved into this. Okay. Vicky Vale says, try going... Um, further east, like Boulder Station or Samstown, and you can actually win some money gambling. This trip is ridiculous, and even downtown is crazy expensive now. Oh, you mean Fremont? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Samstown? I shall Google that. The thing is, though, here's the truth. From my hotel to wherever, it's like a $14 trip. From wherever back to my hotel is like a $40 trip. So yesterday, I just walked home. I mean, I walked back to the hotel. I, I was like, I just, uh, like, I can't, like, I just, I'm like, so anyways, and because now I'm drinking, there's no guarantee that I won't, I mean, even before, I don't like to, like, drive into places unknown, because I get weird, when I'm like, which way do I turn, which way do I go, what's happening, you know, even if I have my Apple Maps or whatever, but um, I'll look into Sam's Town to see where that is, because I do want to win some money gambling. That sounds exciting. Hi, Esther. Ah, uh, Aussie babe. That's what I was thinking. I knew you weren't here because if you were saying night shift. Um, Try going east, like Boulder Station or Samstown. Okay, let's look up Samstown. Is Samstown an area or is Samstown a street? Like, what is Samstown? Let's look. Let's just look it up. Samstown, Vegas. Sam's Club. <laughs> um, I guess. Oh, just a place? It says no reviews and it's 17 minutes away. Oh, it's a casino. Okay. It's not clear what it is. It's like weird. Boulder place too. <sighs> Ubers are specifically more expensive and they charge a surcharge on the strip. If you walk off the L Las Vegas Boulevard and catch an Uber lift, it'll be cheaper. Oh, good to know. Go to Boulder Station and tell my bestie Sandra I said hi. <laughs> All right, Boulder Station. I'll look at that too. Yeah, I'm trying to win some money, girl. I went into the Sahara thinking like, oh, this is an old building. Like I'll win something here. Girl didn't win nothing, okay? The lady behind, the blackjack lady was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, yeah, here's your $5. I gave her a tip of $5. And I was like, here you go. Then I went to, took my last $25, girl, went to the roulette table in the, in the Sahara. And um, I was like, how do I play this? And the guy showed me how to play it. And I, I was, I gave him $5 right off. And he was like, no, don't give it to me now. You're going to win. And I was like, sir, I probably won't. And I surely didn't. And I was like, see, aren't you glad I gave you your tip early? And he was like, oh, man. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, OK, good. All right. So I will go to, um... oh, wait, Vicky Vale and Jasmine, are you guys in Vegas? Well, El Boogie, I can't tell you what hotel I'm at. Security purposes, girl. Um, I can tell you what hotels I've been to. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I might, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to say like for sure going to go to Ellis Island, but yeah, I think I should for sure go. And then, but then maybe like you guys are saying I should go to Sam's club, but I want to sing. So Ellis Island is it for me. Oh, okay, Vicky. Well, if I know you were here, I would have told you I'm going to have brunch with um, at Honey Salt, but I only made a reservation for two. <sighs> I'll be there at 1 30. That I don't know if I don't know what I can do. I feel like it's a pretty much a hot spot. Try the M Resort and Casino for the buffet. I, I don't want to do a buffet. Uh not I just all you can eat, girl. I can't, I can't. I'm already doing the most. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, okay, you lived in Vegas as a young adult. Okay. Oh, uh, Yuli, strawberry short a uh, strawberry festival. How exciting. Good, I'm excited for you. Oh, you live in the OC, Jasmine? Crazy. Y'all can meet up for coffee after lunch. I will be drinking mimosas. But, you know, if Tiana doesn't show up, I'll tell you, Vicky. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, you know, I, like, listen, because I was like, I'm going to London. And when I went to London, I had a good amount of people show up. But like 25 people RSVP'd. And I want to say like seven people showed up. And I'm like, this is me going to London, where I'm literally probably never going again. So like, if you wanted to meet up with Chris and I, meet up with Chris and I. And like seven people showed up. Don't worry, girl. We had a great time. We had the best time. The London gals came through and they were awesome. Every last single one of them. Um, but, you know, I get it. It gets, you know, you're like, hey, I want to meet you. Hey, I want to meet you. And then like gets to blah, blah, blah. And other people just be like, oh, okay. Um, okay. I heard, Laura, I heard not to go to Oahu if I go to Hawaii. I don't know what that means. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Oh, you wanna know this lip color? I bought it from Walmart. So here's the truth. I came to this city with rags, okay? I, I haven't, okay, this is the real tea. I've gained so much weight that I no longer understand how to dress myself. And not only have I gained so much weight, I legitimately, even after the surgery, because I gained more weight after the surgery, when I initially lost the 11 pounds plus the like, eight pounds of fibroids. So I lost like 11 and then the eight. So whatever that math is, I, you know, 19, I lost almost 20 pounds, gained it right back. And the, where I gain is literally right underneath my boob. So like the beginning of the belly down to like right below the belly button. And uh, as much as I'm trying to like embrace this whole body girl, like this belly bothers me. It bothers me more than anything. Cause to me, it looks like I'm about four to five months pregnant <laughs> and I'm not. So I have a hard time buying clothes now because every time I buy something, it just doesn't fit me the way I want it to. I feel like my belly is just protruding. I feel like I need stretchy leggings at all times and like a big top. And I don't want to dress like that because I don't want to have the mentality of an older of an older millennial. I want the met mentality of a Gen Zers. Like I feel like the Gen Zers are so free and like whatever body, they just live in their body and they live their lives and they go about it, right? I come from the decade of low ride jeans and flat bellies, you know? I come from the decade of the Christina Aguilera's and the Britney Spears and the Maya's and the Beyonce's where like low rise and a flat stomach. And because I don't have that right now, even my high rises are, are, are not comfortable. I'm just unable to. So in a long story short, I went to Walmart and bought a couple outfits, which was an adventure for me because I have never purchased clothes from Walmart. And the only reason why I know that I can do that is because my friend Lauren and I made a video a couple years ago about how you could shop at Walmart. And she took me to Walmart and was like, put this on, try this, try that. Like every, and she's always coming to work so cute. And she's like, Walmart girl, Walmart. And I was like, how? So she showed me the ways. And so I took on my inner Lauren and I found a Walmart in Vegas and I bought a dress and it's the dress that I wore last night. If you guys watch my, um, stuff on Instagram, it's the dress I wore last night. That was a Walmart. I was, it was $36 and I was like, uh, why? So I'm gonna wear the shit out of that because I thought it was expensive for what it was, but it was one of the nicer looking things there. I bought a top that I'm going to wear with some jeans. I didn't bring any shoes and I tried to buy shoes at Walmart and it completely let me down. There was not a hill to be had. Ah, how dare you? So the shoes I'm actually wearing most of the time here, the like dress shoes are from Walmart because my friend Lauren helped me buy them. So I think I need to find a target so that I can get like a heel. Anyways, what am I wearing tonight, today to whatever? I don't know. 
Also, like in Vegas, I want two different outfits. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, what time is it? It's time to go. Oh yeah, it's been time to go. There's 30, 62 people in this room. Okay, we can get started. <laughs> oh gosh. Juanita says, it's okay to get high, rise, pants, a size up. I stopped wearing fitted tops when I turned 45 and the hormonal changes started to happen. Girl, it's too much. It's too much. Me and my big belly wearing high rise and low rise. <laughs> I just am like, you know, can't do it. Ooh, eat Activia Greek yogurt or probiotic every day. It really helps belly fat. Okay, I could do that. Even, I'm not a huge fan of yogurt, but I do eat it. Anyways, so that was happening in my head this whole time. Thanks for listening to my TED Talk. Okay. Um, still come to Chicago. I mean, if my job sends me to Chicago, I'll go. I just right now don't have extra money for um, traveling. That isn't work-based. Even coming to Vegas, girl, I was like, let's just go on ahead and pull this money out. Because <laughs> give myself an allowance of what you can spend. And if you spend any, if you spend more than that, then you don't have no money for the rest of the time. Because it's too much. It's too much to do here. I've seen two shows so far. I saw the Michael Jackson one show. Phenomenal. I saw RuPaul's Drag Race. Asia O'Hara. Phenomenal. Um, so yeah, and I'm gonna go see a Motown review show on Mon on Sunday. And then I'm here for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. So I gotta go to the grocery store and just buy groceries because that's all we'll be doing. Next week, no more fun. This is the fun was all happened. The fun has happened already. Thank you, Lucia. I appreciate it. Oh, Lucia, this is a beautiful. Love it. Okay, let's get started. Hey guys, it's Wahima, but just call me Wah. Melanated! Welcome to my recap of Love After Lockup. This is season three, episode 53, Poly Problems. If you guys feel it necessary, please share on any social media platform that you deem fit. Go on ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Take the moment right now to do so. Thumbs, 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 thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Thumbs, 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 thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Thumbs it up. Yes. Whoo, child. These neighbors are so loud, okay? People in the hallway, loud. <laughs> loud. So I listen to my audiobook on full blast because of all of the shenanigans that I'm hearing too. Um, but anyway, so if you guys feel like you want to donate to the baby fund or drop a tip or give a birthday, you know, bit of money, uh, you could do so down below on those several, uh, cash apps, uh, Venmo's and Zell's. And yeah, uh, let's take down this. Thank you guys so much for being here. Mass Cat, thank you so much for the birthday wishes. I absolutely appreciate it. Victoria, thank you so much for the super chat, Vicky Vale. Thank you, or for the, um, whatever that was. I see you, girl. I'll put a 10 in one of the machines for you, okay? When I go play back Blackjack at Sam's Town or Boulder something, I'm gonna go there for sure. I don't know when, but I'm gonna go there. Uh, what audio book are you listening to right now? I'm listening to um, Elves Blood. It's the Witcher series. I've already listened to it once, but I forgot that I listened to it because I have it. El Blood of Elves. It's part of the Witcher series. If you guys follow, uh, if you guys watch it on um, Netflix. Uh, I've already read it though, because I'm reading it and I'm like, this sounds so familiar. Why do I already know this happened? Just because it was in my library and I definitely read it forgot I did so <laughs> went back in and was am now re-listening to it Toya thank you Toya when is the did the thing come out did the um I thought it was coming out in this month did the podcast come out I did a podcast and Toya and I talked a few weeks ago so you guys check out Toya um I was going to promote it but I didn't know if it happened so email me if it did or when it's coming out so that I can promote it all right, let's jump into these first couples. Okay, perfect. It hasn't come out yet, guys. Don't worry, it's coming. 
Um, let's jump in the first couple. Let's talk about Shane and Lacey, okay? Because Lacey is over here acting real brand new. Now, does it not make sense if you are on an adult website to cater to both parties? I'm sorry, are you not a business person? Are you not a person who would like to make as much money as you can? So where do your morals stop is my question. If you're already putting your ass out on on the interwebs, why not give your ass to everybody? Right? So it turns out that Lacey's acting like she's upset or she doesn't quite understand where his proclivities lie because... Uh, oh my God, Alexia, thank you so much for the Venmo. Aww. I appreciate it. And Allie Turner, thank you so much for the cash app. Oh, perfect. You guys are spoiling me. Let me put my, uh, let me keep my, I'll keep my phone on. If you guys hear a game. Take that off. Okay, so she's going to act like she doesn't understand his proclivities because he's sending um, videos of him and Lacey having sex um, to men as well as entertaining them and providing a fantasy. And he's like, she's the one who set up my OnlyFans. She's been doing cam work forever now. So, like, I don't understand why she's coming at me. And I'm like, Lacey, you don't do cam work for women? You wouldn't send a woman your pictures of your boobs or your butt or whatever, if they wanted it, what are you talking about? What are we arguing here? I don't like this argument, okay? It feels homophobic um, and it feels like fraudulent and produce like in the product, in the produce section of the market. You know what I'm saying? We are just lettuce, drop lettuce, drop some vegetables in the comment section if you know what I'm talking about. It feels very, heavily produced. I want to see some tomatoes. I want to see some cabbages. I want to see some lettuces. I want to see some cucumbers. Okay. This is ridiculous. And so I'm just like, I don't like it. And so then she's, he's like, well, I would like for you to go and see, uh, get a polygraph right now. You, I know you're keeping something from me. You go on ahead and get a polygraph right now. And then, then she's like, well, when do you want to know? What do you want to know? And he's like, I don't want to know anything. I want you to be hooked up to the polygraph. And she's like, <sighs> looking at the producers. I'm like, don't look at the producers for help. So then she's like, well, I think we need to go to see marriage counseling. I need to think we need to see marriage counseling. And he's like, well, our whole entire relationship was built up on lies anyway. And she's like, well, tell you what. If we go and see marriage counseling and that marriage counselor says that I need to have a polygraph, then I'll have one. And I was like, no, that sounds dumb. And he's like, okay. And I was like, okay, well then he's dumb. Like this is, <laughs> what? No, go in there right now, strap in and let me ask you some questions. And then she's like, the problem is, is that Shane doesn't open up to me. There's this wall and I don't have that wall with Sean. You know, like John and I have gotten to the place where we've talked really deeply about things that you wouldn't want other people to know. And Shane doesn't have that with me. And so we just haven't quite created that bond. Yet they created a whole human being. They created an entire human being doing IVF and they don't have that bond. Okay, sis, you made that choice. Um, and so, but if Shane had asked me if I was talking to John, I would admit to it. And I'm like, why would he ask you that? Like, why, after everything that just happened, why, why do you, like, he's not being a good partner if he were to ask you about John over and over again. Can we agree on that? So you w saying that you would come clean about you talking to John if only Shane were to ask you is crazy. She's a crazy person. One of my like fears is ending up in a relationship with a crazy person because like I watch these shows and I watch people just be crazy all the time. Just say crazy things like come up with crazy, um, come up with crazy. Like it's like you tell somebody, this is what I expect from you. And then they say something different. And then you're like, well, why didn't you say that before? Like why all of a sudden now is I asked you, okay, so example, like Brittany and Ray. 
So Brittany, like, let's say that Brittany said to Ray, when you come out of prison, I need you to get a job immediately, right? And he's like, bet, I'll get a job immediately. Then he gets out of prison and doesn't get a job immediately. And she's like, but you told me you would. And he's like, well, I didn't know. No, no, no. You said you would. And the moment you decided that you couldn't or that it wouldn't be something you'd be able to do, you should have said that. You should have said, hey, I'm out now. Not going to be able to get that job. I know I said I would. And I know I'm going back on what I promised I would do. However, uh, I'm suffering from severe anxiety right now and I cannot do so. So most people do not have the nomenclature, as what I'm discovering, to be able to actually say how they feel and what they want. And if that changes, own up to that being a change as and then instead of making excuses because a lot of times what people do is that they go well you shouldn't have asked me to do that it's like no you should have said you couldn't do it don't expect me to anticipate what your capabilities are i'm not gonna and there's no way i can so it just feels real fraudulent. Again, only one person put some vegetables in the comment section. I'm gonna need the rest of you guys to get your vegetables together. If you, especially if you feel like it's being produced, just like drop some veggies in the comment section. Um, <laughs> so it's just really annoying to me that they're having this back and forth um, regarding whether or not he is, I don't know, talking, like not talking, but entertaining other men, but not for realsies. And he's just trying to make this money, money, money. Um, and so then Shane, John is calling her. It's like, boom, 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 boom. And she's just like, bloop, bloop. <laughs> she blocked him. And he knows exactly what's going on. He says that the reason why Lacey is blocking him or what the reason why his her phone is going straight to voicemail is because he knows that she's with somebody her husband that she doesn't want to know that John is calling her and so I guess eventually she'll unblock him and call him and be like hey hey what's going on John I love you and Sheen is just not being the husband that I need him to be and like if only you would put down the heroin then we can be together but I will always be there for you regardless anyways when you're clean girl it's too much it's too much okay Chris W okay okay touche Touche. Um, <laughs> okay, so the next couple that we are going to talk about uh, are faves. Stan and Lisa. Stan, Lisa has got some really like deep cheekbones. I mean, her cheekbones are giving me life. She's giving me like Viking princess realness. Like just look at her face and her hair. It's only because her hair has those like, I don't know, what are the, whatever they're called. Her hair has that in it. And it kind of gives me like Viking vibes. Like, you know what I'm saying? She looks real strong. Anywho, so these two are going at it. And where we left off last episode is that she is catfishing him and he comes home and says, hello, darling, what are you up to? And she's just like, no, oh, nothing, babe. What are you doing? And and he's just like oh nothing nothing's going on I just you know wanted to come and bring you these raggedy ass flowers and she's like oh babe thank you so much for these flowers and he's just like yeah I just wanted to show you that I really messed up and I said some things that I didn't mean to say um yeah I just you know I just you know wanted to you know make us better or whatever <laughs> And this whole time, look at her eyes. She is rolling her eyes 150% because she knows that she's caught him. And she's like, so, you know, I just want to like get things, you know, to a good place. You know, everyone come clean with whatever's going on in their lives. I would like to restart because, you know, I've got the Lord on my side. And he's like, oh, no, no secrets to tell. Yeah, babe, no secrets to tell. Not, not a secret to be had. And she's like, okay, well, I'm going to go upstairs and get dressed and... You know, and he's like, yeah, let's go upstairs uh, and uh, and shower. She's like, okay. So then they have their next scene together. And uh, she comes downstairs and he's like, oh, that's bright. You're wearing something bright. 
And she's like, yeah, I'm going out with my friend. Um, I'm probably not going to be back tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. And he's like, well, what friend are you going out with? And she's just like, a friend that I've known for a couple of years now. So I'm going to need some money. And, uh, and he's like, oh, well, I don't, I don't have any money. And she's like, what? And he's like, well, let's go upstairs and see what money I have. And I'm like, did he go in his piggy bank? Is it? Why do they gotta go upstairs? Is that where his wallet is? He left his wallet upstairs. Maybe that's what's going on. But at first I was like, where are they going? Why are they going upstairs, right? So Lisa's got this whole plan because she's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's not gonna be illegal, but I'm gonna have something for that ass, okay? Because he's gonna bring me these flowers that looks like he took off of somebody's grave. They weren't even nice flowers. So wherever he was walking must have been a cemetery. And then he expects everything to be okay. No because he's still lying to me, lying dead to my face. And I know that he's lying dead to my face and I don't appreciate it. And I said, girl, we don't appreciate it either. He's a little scammer, a little scoundrel. He's like, well, there are some white lies that are happening, but like, it's nothing you know worth telling her about. And I'm like, it's cause you're always looking for the next best thing. Cause you know that this thing with Lisa is not gonna last. So Lisa's annoyed. Uh, and her friend Renata gets there and her and Renata go off and he's over here looking out the window trying to figure out, well, who is this person Renata? And my thing, my thought is like, why didn't they just come out and meet her? Like what, what was stopping him from coming out? Did she say, no, I don't want you to come down. It's weird. He says, well, I was trying to plan something for us tonight. So I just wanted to know when you'd be back. And she's like, well, I don't know when I'd be back. And then we have a little segment where they talk about how cheap he is and how quote unquote frugal, which is like, AKA cheap. And he says that it has always kind of been his thing to, I don't know, to laugh at other people who pay $4 for something when he's only paid two for it. And I was like, "Mm, I see why your house is the way it is. You know, they're, they're like, listen, I always think about fact, like what happens if I were to ever just get a million dollars, what would I do with it? Uh, first, I would pay off debt. Secondly, I would put like 250K, 200K, 150K, 150K into like a Roth, Roth IRA, right? Just for the rainy day, like just 150 gone. Don't ask me no questions, it's out of here. Okay, 250 if I have the willpower. And then I would have a house that I really liked being in. Like everything would be state of the art, okay? (laughs) And I would invest that into the house with the hopes of A, either selling it for a higher value or B, living there for the rest of my life. So it doesn't matter if I sunk too much into the house because it's my haven, it's where I'm gonna be. It's the family home for me and mine's, okay, my generations. And it's also gonna be like, you know, a landing place, right? For me and mine's, my generation. So like, that is what I would do with the money. And the rest, um, um, maybe I would like get a personal trainer, like, <laughs> I don't know. I would get food delivery for sure. And then start working out. And would I quit my job? Yes, the current iteration of it, yes. But if I had a job that I really liked, no, I wouldn't quit it. Because like at the end of the day, like you could never have, it's like a million dollars does not put one into retirement, girl. Like you still have to live your life. I want to travel and stuff. So that's what I would do. And so for me, it feels like he is not doing all those things. He's still living like a, like a miser. He's still living like a, like a penny pinching, you know, person. And they're like, oh, that's why he has a million. That's why he's a millionaire. And I'm like, that's not why it's also due to some good business choices, but also like he's in Missouri, like, (laughs) People who live in Missouri and are millionaires are living a bigger and better life than people who are on the West Coast or the East Coast that are millionaires because of the cost of living is so low. Like a million is not doing that much on the coast. It's doing a lot in Missouri. And I just wonder how long he hasn't worked, right? And he's also probably thinking about his kids and their inheritance. So he can't be spending too much money right now in his life because he probably wants, I think he has like four or five or no, three or four kids. And so like, you know, in, in, in their inheritance, a million dollars, if you want to give them 250K each, like that's a good amount to leave your kids. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. A million is not enough these days. You got to take care of it. I agree with you. That's why I'd put that, oh, some of it away. I would, you know, pay like down payment on a house. 
Uh, I wouldn't buy my whole house with it, but I would down payment on a house and then fix up my house, you know, which could easily be 500K. That's half the money. It's not a lot. I agree with you. Hi, Doris. Welcome to the room. Um, Annie says a million dollars could get us a fully paid house where we want and college for each kid. And that's it. Not here. <laughs> not on the West Coast. Where are you, girl? Like, I, I, not here. A uh, million dollars could get you a fully paid home if you only paid three fifty for it. And then for the kids' education, which personally, I have... Uh, I don't know about paying for my kids' education. Like, how much is that? And like, does it really set them up? Here's why I say that. Not because I don't want to set them up. It's because, are they going to finish school? You need to, I need to know the temperate of the kid, right? Like, and not every kid should, not every person is made for college. It's not for everyone. So if I pay for my kids college, one of them that goes, what am I going to do for the other ones? Like there's, I don't want there to be a penalty for not going to college if it's not for them. Also, what if they don't finish and I've paid all this money or what if I paid all this money and they still like, don't do whatever it is that I think I expect them to do. I don't know that I could give that money without expectation. Like there are people who are like, I'm going to pay for your schooling. And then like, I'm good, whatever you do in life. No, I'm gonna pay for that schooling. And I'm gonna need you to pay for my life after like, you know, what I mean? like, I, I think there are strings attached in my brain that I'm not aware of. And so for me, it's like, if you want to go to school, go get all the loans you can't not the loans try to get all the free grants and monies that you can if you need help let me know but i need to know that you are serious about it so i don't know about saving for it i don't know i don't know i haven't thought about it but anyways that's a that's a tangent that we don't have to go into um <laughs> what is this vicky bell says i went to college in mississippi and one million is enough to buy two two towns plus a little bit of property on on real fertile land even half of that would be worth it to buy me a town yeah yeah i, I would buy land in not in california <laughs> but yeah you can't buy anything mm -mm, you can't do not over here not over here girl um okay so anyways she leaves with renata and he's out the window like a little weird stalker looking at her trying to figure out who renata is and where they're going and whatnot and lisa does look good i'm like okay girl Someone sent me a picture of Lisa currently and she has brown hair and she does not have her eyebrows filled in. And I was very upset about it. Um, but yeah, so that's the end of their segment. All right. So next we're going to talk about, let's just jump to Brittany and Ray because she is, I mean, can we drop some vegetables in the comment section for this produced segment? Because it was ridiculous. So we got Brittany and Ray. Brittany gets up and she comes out in, in a little short dress and it looks like there's some some mimosas sitting out for her to sir, sip, sip, sir, sip on. And I don't like champagne. So mimosas to me are like a headache in a bottle. And I'm just, I don't get them. But um, a little wine, I could see that. <laughs> okay, so he's making some eggs. And why doesn't anybody have bowls? Because this is the second time or third time I've seen somebody on this show scrambling or like, cooking their egg, not cooking, but what is it called? Mixing their scrambled eggs in a plastic container, like a Tupperware plastic to-go container. No, no bowls? <laughs> it's just something random that I noticed that I was like, this is so weird. So anyways, he's making her breakfast and he's like, I'm going to go out with my friend, uh, my cousin who lives down the street. I haven't seen him in about four years. And she's like, what cousin? And he's like, a cousin of mine. It's not very far. I'm going to go hang out with him today. And she's like, well, we have today off. No, no, let me back up. First, she says, oh, you're emptying the trash? Like he's a kid. Like he doesn't have a job. Like he doesn't live there. And he's like, yeah, like I do every day. And she's like, oh, and you're cooking? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Girl, annoyed. I was annoyed for him, okay? And so he's making her food and he's putting the bacon in the oven, you know what I'm saying? Not frying it and messing up all of her black backsplash of her kitchen, you know what I'm saying? Like doing the healthy thing, baking that bacon. And she's just like, um, well, whose house are you going to? And she's like, my cousin, I haven't seen my cousin in a long time. And she's like, well, I don't, I mean, like, why don't I know who this person is if this person lives around the corner? And he's like, I don't know what to tell you. And she's like, well, I mean, can I come? And he's like, 
no, it's me and my cousin. And she's like, well, I don't understand why I can't come. Like all of my dealings, I revolve around you and I don't understand. And like that part made me so angry. And I can't, it makes me mad that there are people in this world. <laughs> and I don't know where this is coming from, you guys. I'm just spitballing off the top of my brain. I don't understand why there are people in this world who feel it appropriate to go with their significant other everywhere. Who feel some kind of way if their significant other wants to hang out with other people in their lives without them. I don't get it. And it makes me angry because I literally go everywhere by myself. And there are people in this world who can't even let their significant other go and hang out with family by themselves. Like not everybody wants to be around you all the time. And he's like, now that I'm off tether, I feel like, you know, I've spent a lot of time with Brittany. Like I want some time away. I want some alone time. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? Why is, why is there like two schools of thought when it comes to relationships? There are two schools of thoughts. It's either you're, you're both independent doing what you want to do and come together at, at normal times. And then there's the two that are always fucking together. And you know, here's the reason why it makes me mad is because when I was in high school and college, I had girlfriends like that, who when they got a boyfriend, all of a sudden their boyfriend joined our friend group. And I was like, no. Like, if you wanna hang out with them, just go with them. Like, if you're gonna ditch me for your boyfriend, that's fine, as long as we didn't have plans. And you know, at the age of 18, do we really have plans? No, the only plans were to get in the car and drive around and find something to do. So that's fine. But I also don't want to drive around and find something to do with your significant other while you guys are babe and holding each other and touching each other. Because guess what? It makes me feel like absolute doo-doo because I am solo dolo. And at this golden age of 39 years old, if my significant, I always tell Chris, if she ever got a boyfriend, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't hang out as much. We just wouldn't be friends and like hang out like that. And she's like, why? And I'm like, because you would want to bring them everywhere. Like you would want to be with them all the time. And I'm going to never want to be with them. And she's like, well, <laughs> she's like really thinking about it. And I was like, girl, no, I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't want to be with them. I don't want to be with you and them. Like if I'm gonna hang out with you, I want to hang out with you. I don't need him calling you. I don't want him to call. I don't want you texting to check up. Like I don't want to, if I'm hanging out with you, I don't want to know or hear about your significant other. Now that may be crazy of me, but as a single person who is sad and lonely, I do not want to see your happiness ever. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying I don't want to see your happiness ever. That's me being extra. But I mean, I'm, I don't want to see, like, no, I'm not going anywhere with you. No. Like, if you have a birthday party, okay, maybe I'll come. <laughs> but even then, if I come, I'm bringing my other friend. Okay? And you can feel some way about it. I'm bringing my other friend who doesn't have a boyfriend or a significant other. My husband has his own friends. He will go hang out with his boys, even has all women lunch groups that has a monthly dinner. He's, a, he's the only male. I don't care where in the least. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. <laughs> like I, I'm like, I can't, I don't, I don't know. Even if I like him, I do. There's very rare that I'm around a couple who don't couple with each other when they're together. I don't want to see you guys holding hands, kissing, long looks, none of that. Like, I just don't want to be there. I only actually have one friend and that's because she knows it makes me uncomfortable. And so I've known her and her husband. I've known her before she got with her husband, but I also knew them when they were dating, when they were re in a relationship, when they got engaged, when they got married, when they had their first kid, second kid. So like, I've known them throughout different stages of my life. And they're one of the only couples that I can hang out with because when I'm there, He's cool with me. He and I have completely different conversation than what she and I has. She doesn't feel weird when he and I go on a tangent talking about other things. Like, and when it's time for him to leave, when he's like, all right, well, I'm good. He recognizes that when I'm there, he no longer needs to be there. He's like, oh, she's good. All right, I'm gonna go do this. And she's like, oh, you're gonna go whatever. He's like, yeah, I'm going, I'll take the girls or I'll go and I'll take one, like whatever. It's very chill. There's no like, 
you know, he and I have a moment where we chill. Like there have been times where I, I go to, I'm going to meet her at her house and I get there and she's like, oh, he's there. And I'm like, cool. So I go in and we chop it up for a long time talking about rap, talking about whatever. And then she comes and then I take over. And then he's like, all right, I'm out. And I'm like, great. That's what I need. And she doesn't ever feel clingy. She's not like on him. Like, you know, oh, like, you know, it's like, it's fine. Maybe I just need to be with friends who've been in their relationships for like over 10 years to where they just don't need to be all up on each other. Like, that's what it is. It's what it is. I just, you know, whatever. I just can't. Another red flag is when your partner doesn't have any friends or associates and they cling to you, then they get upset when you want some alone time or friend time. That's the, yeah. Ooh, girl. Yes. Yes. I had a girlfriend who wanted her boyfriend, wanted her boyfriends to drop all of his friends for her. And I was like, that is crazy. Y'all don't have a family. You're not paying a mortgage. There's no reason for this person to drop all of his friends just to hang out with you every single day. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, no. Anyways, so what was I even talking about? Girl, who knows? Oh, yeah, Brittany. <laughs> okay, so Brittany now is like feeling some kind of way because she wasn't invited and she wants to be there. She doesn't know who this man is. He could be a kingpin. Go on ahead and drop some vegetables in the comment section for that. That's what happens when producers give you a storyline and they don't give you a script and you're not an actor or an improviser. So you just say whatever and it sounds crazy. Like that voice I just made. Okay, so she's been drinking a little bit. So <laughs> she got some feelings, okay? And now that she's she's like, I don't like it because now that he's on his feet and he could do whatever he wants to because he got a little car and a little job that he feels like he could just do whatever he wants without me and that he's going to stop communicating with me. Why am I just finding out this morning that you are going to go hang out with your friends or your cousin? Now, on that point, I agree. He should have told her last night because if they both had the day off and she's having some plans to hang out with him, like you would think that that would be bedroom talk. So the, the truth is, is that I feel like she knew about this time hanging out with him prior to, right? Um, and so her cousin comes over a little later or someone, I don't know who it is. <laughs> uh, oh my God, why would he be a kingpin girl? I do not know, but those are the words that came out of her mouth. Jenna Lynn, hello. Oh yeah, a long time, 100% must, 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 must. She needs 72 hours notice, says Laura. <laughs> um, so anyways, then her cousin comes over or someone, girl, I don't know who that person is. I wasn't paying attention. I was getting dressed. And um, that person comes over and is like, so what's he doing? Where he going? And Brittany's like, I don't even know. He could be at some houses and some bitches could be there. And the cousin is like, oh, okay, so you don't even know where it is? And she's like, I mean, we do share locations. So I do know where he's at and I do know that he's close. But I don't know who all over there. And the cousin was like, well, you need to roll up, girl. And she was like, I'm going to roll up. Um, with a baseball bat and I'm gonna be hitting bitches over the head and the cousin was like nah nah you need to go over there and act like a lady you know what I mean you need to be chill like you know just set some boundaries but I don't go in there acting crazy she's like well I'm gonna bust out some windows because this don't make no sense cousin's like nah don't bust out window you don't want to go out beside yourself and out like you know what I'm saying like but just you can go over there to see what's up, see if there's any girls there. There could be a bunch of hoes over there. They could be trying to set him up with somebody new, and I don't even know about it. And because he left the house looking all nice and stuff, like he's never dressed like that for me. So I don't know what's going on over there. Scene. You're welcome. So I'm just like, what? <laughs> so she's been drinking, and then she gets into the car which is an apt thing to do. And we know that she's gonna drive over there and act a fool of herself. And I'm just like, why would you agree to this? If it were me, I would not agree to it. I would not agree to it. <sighs> she wants to control that man. She's a stage, she is stage five top shelf clinger. And that's why she chose a man from prison because she wanted someone who would need her and no one else. She's insecure and crazy. I agree. 
However, we have to remember that Ray reached out to her on Facebook and she didn't know he was in prison for a while. So I always want to throw that out there because that's the narrative going around about Britney. But I do think you're correct. I just don't think that the situation is set up that way initially. Um, then she's going to talk about, oh, uh, he's not call he's not answering or answering my text when I'm asking him what he's doing. And what I'm just like, no, 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 no. Too much, too much, too much, too much, too much. Uh, uh. You know where that man is. You see him on his. Th so what do you think? He left his phone at the house and he's off gallivanting without you. Why can't he do that? Can't have his life. She crazy. She crazy. Okay. Next couple that we're going to talk about some more crazies. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Christiane and John. Uh, just in case you don't remember who Christiane is, let me find a picture of her. Okay. Just wanted to remind you about those eyebrows in case you have forgotten. Okay, it's really important. So uh, they get to the hotel and uh, they're about to get married or get to the space to get married. And John's like, all right, all right, everybody out of the car, get everything set up. We gotta do what we gotta do. Keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. And so Christiane is there with those two people, don't know who they are, but she's got a makeup artist girl. Her mother is there. And when she pulls up, her mama's in the corner crying because she really do, does feel like she's losing Christiane to a certain extent. She feels like this might be a very big step for Christiana and that Christy is going to get caught up in this, not know what to do, not know how to live her life as an adult in the real world, not know how to be a wife or a stepmother, and then just start using again. And that is so terrifying. And I really, my heart goes out to Tammy, you know? I hope she got her oxygen tank because I know that crying cannot be good for her. But I really do, my heart does go out to Tammy because what a crazy, stressful situation for a mother of a grown, two grown ass women who got addicted to drugs. And Tammy asks, was I a bad mom? What did I do? And Christiana says, no, you were a good mom. You know, we always had food on the table. We always had Christmases. We always had birthdays. And so her mother's like, I just don't want anything bad to happen to you. I don't want you to go back to those ways because you get overwhelmed. And I'm like, it's a very real fear because life is hard. Literally once a week, I'm like, oh God. Well, I don't have to do this. Why do I have to do this? Like, what, what did I do? How, how did I get here? How did I end up here? Like, why am I, why is this my life? Like, what, what? And I'm like, I can only imagine someone like Christiane who like literally lost ha so far a lot of her life to drugs, you know, messed up really bad as a mom. And so I, I'm like, what did Tammy do? So here's my, here's my thing. Was, were Christiana and Tara molested as children and they told Tammy and she didn't believe it because it was one of her boyfriends? Like what happened? Because if Tammy was a good mother and I'm not saying that people who don't, ha who people's, I'm not, I'm not trying to equate bad parenting with drug abuse. Um, well, am I? It can lead to it, but I'm not saying it's 100%. I'm not saying that every drug addict has a bad parent, but I'm saying that every drug addict had a catalyst. There was something in their lives that led them to the comfort of drugs and alcohol over living normal life, right? Except for maybe somebody like, well, no, everybody I can think of. Anybody that I know that has a drug abuse or I've heard of that has a drug abuse problem is because there's some sense of unworthiness or worthlessness or you know low self-esteem something that's happening that's stopping them from being able to like live life normally where they had to kind of get involved with something that numbed the pain and then from there addiction takes over but i'm talking about the initial catalyst to try the drug because you go from like drinking and weed which are like the gateway drugs and i don't want to say weed is a gateway drug i mean like everybody who gets on weed ends up becoming a crackhead like not what i'm saying but i'm saying those are the two most accessible safe-ish I, I honestly think weed is better than alcohol personally 
but I'm not, I, I don't know any studies that show that, but I personally think that weed is better than alcohol. So it's like alcohol is a socially accepted, like addiction, you know, based out thing. Like I, what I just, I want to know what happened to Christiane in her childhood because Tammy could have done the very best that she could have done and could have been a decent mother to them yet still made them feel less than, or had bad, had them around bad people who introduced them to bad things because, you know, what else do people in that community do? And that happens sometimes, right? Like you, there's a lot of things contributing to it, but I'm pretty sure it happened in both. Tam- like two sisters don't come out as crackheads or meth addicts and not have had some shit happened in their house. The house in which the mother is the one to control or the parents are to control. Who knows where the father is? Like, who knows? So yes, yes, Tracy, like, I'm not trying to say that it all has to do with the family, but something happens. And so yours was specifically with injury. Yeah. And it happens with that too. A lot of like, Oh, that's the worst I've had. Uh, I know, I know somebody who got addicted to painkillers through due to an injury. There were also other things happening in their life. Not to say that was you Tracy, but there were also other things happening in their life to where it became a, a very, very convenient and easy cr- crutch. Um, and it's something that like, even I have been scared of, like when the doctor gave me medication after my surgery or when like my brother came out of his surgery and he was given medication, like I took it and threw it down the, tro- the, the toilet. Cause I was like, we don't need, like, you can't get addicted to this. <laughs> like you can't get addicted to this. So it's, I feel like addiction is in my family too. Right. It can also be hereditary. Like you try something and then you can't stop because it makes you feel good. Mm. I had a friend whose mother was like that too. It was a, I can't remember why they gave it to her. I don't know if it started with Xanax for depression and anxiety and it just kind of went up from there. But um, she, her mother was addicted to opioids her entire childhood. And you would never know. They, you would never know from the outside the chaos that was happening on the inside of the house. Like her parents got divorced. Mother was still able to live a certain lifestyle because of alimony and because of child support. Doctors were still giving mother prescription medication. And her mother ended up ODing when we were in our 20s. Like... And we, she had, she had confided in me that her mother was addicted to painkillers. So like when her mother passed, those of us in her inner circle knew that it was because she had overdeed, OD'd on, on prescription medication and that she had been addicted to prescription medication, um, the entire childhood toward the point where my friend wouldn't even drink because she was so scared of being addicted to things because she grew up with that in her house. So like, yeah. And this was. a a Caucasian family (laughs) like this wasn't a black family so that that was the first time I had ever truly seen like non-poor white folks addicted to drugs I mean I mean I'd be around her mother and she would just be like nodding off in this like lovely townhome you know and it's like the first time I had ever seen anything like that so like yeah it happens but anyways um, like, I wonder if Tammy was an alcoholic when, when they grew up, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just wonder what happened and I'm not trying to blame anything, but the fact is, is that Tammy's worried about Christiane being able to stay sober. And Christiane is like 30, mid thirties. She's like 35 or something like that. She's, she's been addicted for 10 years. Plus her sister is too. She didn't even raise her own son who showed up. Um, and she says the best thing that ever happened. Um, oh yes. And thank you so much, Tracy. Uh, thank you for sharing that Tracy. And I wish you all the best 100%. Um, so it's like, it's a lot, it's a lot to put on anybody. And so I completely understand why Tammy was crying and John is having a heart to heart conversation with his daughter chicken. Um, and chicken is saying like, you always jump into these relationships with women. And it really worries me that Esme, I think the the youngest daughter who was really close to Christiane, 
is going to negatively be impacted if Christiane goes back to prison or starts using again. And that John didn't really think about it. And John is like, well, you know what? You can't hold the past against me I'm moving forward with my life. I love Christiane. I'm going to help keep her sober. And I'm just like, how? How are you going to help keep her sober? Like, I, it, to me, I think Christiane needs therapy. And I hope that she's in it so that she can learn coping mechanisms. I hope that she's in therapy so that she's able to learn coping mechanisms to be able to cope with life when it gets really hard, because it's going to be hard. At some point, she's going to have to get a job. She's going to be dealing with like annoying ass people. She's going to have stresses. She probably has restitution she has to pay off. Like there's a lot. So I'm just trying to figure out like, who is there to help Christiane? And is this wedding the right thing for her? Like, is that going to solve everything? And probably not. And that was Sarah's slash chickens uh, commentary about that as well. Anyways, so John went all out, got the girl a makeup artist for her wedding, and she's getting her makeup done. And while she's there, her son comes up, and his name is either Dethan or Dethan, or I don't know, she calls him D. He's 20. So she's been on, oh my God, this child is 20? Christiane has been an addict for over 20 years, or for 20 years at least, because she was doing drugs before she got pregnant. Damn, I want, I can't remember how, does anyone remember how old Christiane is? Is she 35? 20 years, that means that, isn't that 15? Yeah. Wow. Uh, he didn't want to see her. He wasn't open to going. And also, like, I don't know if she can travel. Can she travel like that? I think she's 36, too. That means that she had him when she was 15 years old. And then she said that, yeah, 15 or 16. Definitely a, a, a teenager, like 16, 17. Wow. He's 20? And that she says the best thing that ever happened was that the son, the father took the son to raise him because she was so messed up. Wow, that's so unfortunate. It's really hard to kick a habit when you've been doing it since you were a teenager because your brain is all scrambled. Your brain literally, like, that's your dopamine. Like, your brain doesn't know how to manage without it because you're still growing and becoming a person at that age. And if you do, like, drugs and stuff, heavy, heavy drugs during that time period, your body gets used to that. That is your coping, coping mechanism. So anyways, the son comes and he isn't sure about John and this whole situation, but she's very happy to see him. And she hugs him and tells him that she loves him and she's really sorry for being a bad parent. Um, and that she really is grateful that he decided to come and be in the wedding because he's in the wedding. And, uh, you know, she asks for help to, be, to put her dress on. Um, and he tells her that she looks beautiful. I wonder how old the baby daddy was, the way to the point where he could take her, he could take, like, I, I guess I'm just wondering why couldn't Tammy take Ethan? And why did the father of the kid take Ethan? Was the father of the kid a grown ass man? I would really like to know how old Ethan's father was. Is this like a Britney situation where Okay, I don't want to go into it. It's making me sad. Anyways, so I really do hope the best for Christiana and any recovering addict. So Tammy is really angry about this whole situation. I think she's more angry about the fact that Tara isn't showing up. But unbeknownst to all of them, the reason why, or not maybe the reason why, but John has reached out to Tara and told Tara not to come if she was going to be on drugs. And so um, I think Tammy and Chrissy are really frustrated about either Tara's like not being there, her not responding to anything and or the fact that she was probably using, which is why she's not responding or, you know, or there or whatnot. So, God. Uh, 
<sighs> now I'm sad. <laughs> uh, now I'm sad. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And I wish the best for her both because it's kind of like the Tracy situation where you see it happening, you see things and you're just like, please. I mean, except for she's not on drugs. I haven't seen Christiane on drugs. But the fact is, is that everyone's worried about her sobriety. And it's like your people are worried about your sobriety. Po possibly getting married isn't the thing to do. Uh, next group of people that we're going to talk about is the poly programs, poly problems group. Okay. So now we got this situation where Nicole has reached out to Deonte and is like, let's you, me and Tia have a date and meet here a time and place. And he said, bet. And so he's going to come. So these two get there and they're ordering drinks, girl drinks and shots they are ready to partay don't nobody have to drive nowhere you know what i'm saying uber all day every day and um you know nicole is just nervous about what the conversation with dante is going to be because she's like i just don't know what he's going to say how he's going to feel and so he gets there and he's like well why am i here and let me see what she says let me read it to you so she says, thank you for being here and being respect respectful. Um, and Tia also says that this whole relationship that Nicole is trying to have with Dante is, is temporary. Uh, either way it goes, either she's going to leave if, if, if Nicole stays with Dante too long or Dante is going to leave or whatever she's going to make. She's going to make Nicole leave Dante. Um, Dante says that when he sees Tia, he sees a dude, which to me is like, What do you mean you see a dude? I mean, she is masculine presenting, but like, are you saying that you just see her as competition? And if that's the truth, then yes, like you should have been seeing her as competition because that's exactly what she is, is competition. And he says, I just see her as somebody who came and stole my woman away. And I said to myself, Dante, you are too grown to be thinking that anyone can steal anyone away. Like the only way someone steals someone away is if they literally kidnap them in the middle of the night and trap them in a tower. Like, what do you think Nicole is, a princess? She not Rapunzel? Like Nicole went to Tia because either A, that's what she wanted or B, you weren't giving her something that she needed. But we all know that it is both, a little both. She didn't want you. She wanted Tia, but she wanted your money. Um, so he pulls up and he's like, y'all look nice. Cause I guess he just doesn't know what else to say. Like that's what he needs to say when you first roll up on women is to tell them they look nice. And I'm like, um, you think that these two people look nice? First of all, Nicole's foundation or like powder is all in her eyelashes, okay? Her eyelashes are white on top and black on the bottom. She didn't even take the time out to take off the powder off of her eyelashes. Or maybe she did her makeup in the car. I don't know, girl. But listen, if you're going to put makeup on, be prepared for me to read you because I will. So she's like, why am I here? Um... And then he says something to Tia, like, I don't want to be with you because you look like a man. And Tia is like, well, there are plenty of men who want to be with me because I look like a man. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, this is annoying for the both of us, but we're all here for Nicole. Um, and so then he says something about being in a threesome, which sets Tia off because Tia is like, I'm never, ever, ever going to be with a man. So I don't even know why you're talking about that. And then... Dante is like, well, F you then. And she's like, well, F you. And so they start to like, you know, bicker back and forth, which makes Nicole start to cry because she really doesn't want Tia to go back into prison by popping up and cutting uh, Dante. And Dante is like, I am not scared of you. I am a Marine. You do not scare me. And so Nicole jumps up and she's like, I need a drink. So she goes in the, in the kitchen and inside the restaurant and orders two double Hennessy's in order to what, make the situation better? I'm sorry, did you think that ordering two double Hennessy's was gonna calm everybody down, ma'am? No, it it's not. It's only gonna make things hype. So she's too like stressed out and annoyed because the con she's trying to run is not working because she actually has a conscience somewhat and feels bad for the way that she's treating Dante. And the fact that she's just trying to use Dante for his money, low key. But 
high key, she wants to just be with them both. She's selling it to Tia, like, we gonna use this man for his money, don't worry. But Tia's like, all right, let's use him for his money. However, at some point, we're gonna stop using him for his money. And you're gonna walk away from that, because I'm not sharing you, period, point blank. And so then Nicole's like, you say you love me, but you over here causing problems and you go, you making things worse. I don't even know why you're talking about threesomes. We're not going to have a threesome. And he's like, well, I misunderstood. And Tia's like, well, great. I misunderstood too, but whatever. You don't want to come in at me uh, acting crazy. And Tia's trying to correct him and talking about, I'm not having sex with you. And then he gets upset and walks away because he's so mad. So he goes on a walk. She's crying. She orders the double shot. And then we have a confessional of Tia say, I don't care if he's an Air Force karate fighter. He not about to get over on me. I don't care what he do. I don't care if he is a fucking Navy sailor samurai. Okay. I'm Tia. I got the bigger balls. Drunk as a skunk. And we all know that she's got problems with like some kind of addiction too. I don't know what it was. Was it heroin that she was addicted to, girl? I don't know. Or she was selling it, girl? I don't know. But she don't need to be drinking like that. Ooh, Chantel. I think she's crying because she's strung out. Not that she feels bad. Tia and Nicole are together because they seem to be living a Bonnie and Clyde lifestyle of scamming and Tia condones her using. They're both using. I bet Tia will be pimping her any. You think they're using? Okay, I'm looking at comments. Hold on. Let's just settle into this thought. You think that they are using? Tracy thinks they're using too. Oh my God, yeah, when he said that, I'm not attracted to you, but maybe she's gonna look different naked. I was like, D the, the toxic masculinity in Dante is so ridiculous. And it's harder to even accept because he seems like a simpleton. So it's like weird that there's all of this like toxic masculinity. What? Tia and Nicole are both look higher than a pair of giraffes. What? How did you guys see that? Let me go, let me go back to the pictures. Let me go back to the pictures. When they first get there, they look high. What do you think they're on? I don't know, girl. I mean, I have the worst pictures of them. Here they look like something's up. Look at Tia's splotchy face. She crying here too, because she says that things, I don't know what, I don't even really know what she's crying about in this, in this portion of it, but um, she's very upset. She's very upset. Woo, girl. Woo, girl. I did not even think of that. That makes me so sad. I don't want them to be on drugs. Ooh. Oh my God. At the end, for sure. Oh my God, 100% are. Look at Nicole's weight loss from COVID. Oh, girl. <laughs> Why didn't I know this? I just believe that she was. You guys, if someone tells me that they've lost weight because of being, because of having COVID twice, like, I never assume people are on drugs. I was walking around the strip yesterday. Lots of folks on drugs. Okay. Lots of folks with no shoes on off drugs you guys i didn't know that <laughs> brenda brenda b thank you so much for the zell i appreciate it. are you giving me money because of my naivete <laughs> thank you i didn't even notice that no I don't like it when people are on drugs in the show. It makes it harder for me to like comment because I'm like, they're not in their right minds. Oh, thank you, Brenda. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
What? First of all, smiling Sherelle, hello, how are you? Never seen your name before. You guys, this whole entire time, this whole entire time, I don't know how to speak. Bonnie, hello, I've never seen your name either. Hello, welcome. Oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. That makes me really sad for her. I don't want her to be using. No, uh, her mother has all this faith in her. She just got out of prison. You can't be using. Oh, Brenda, you're not gonna be here today? Okay, girl, I understand. I get you, I get you. Uh, I haven't been around people who are on drugs, so I'm naive to it too. I mean, yeah, I also just like, to me, heroin is like one thing, you know? And so like, and then it's like the heroin lean too. It's like, like, so if people aren't literally like, I'm like, I don't know what they could be on. Like, I just have no idea. I have no, I have no, no idea. I'm just like weed, crack, you know? <laughs> like, weed, meth, crack. That is all I know. And when I say no, I mean, I just know about weed. I mean, crack and meth. I've never, I've, I've, no, I don't really know about it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. They've been scamming people for money, 100 here, 200 there. <gasps> Dedra, what do you mean we need a dog? Dedra, <laughs> what do you mean? What, they're scamming people? Girl, Erica, tell us more. Give us more, give us more details. Hi, Daphne, welcome. Give us more deets, give us more deets, Erica. We need more deets. A lot of people snort heroin and even smoke it. You could knock me over with a feather right now. Emily, don't of course me. Don't of course me. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know that. That makes me, so it's, I wonder if Dante can tell that they're using one. Two, I also wonder if like, Dante thinks he's gonna be Captain save -a and save her from the drugs. Ooh, some YouTuber got the DMs from fans. They were saying that they ran out of gas and can you send me a hundred and we'll send 200 back. Then they block them after they get the money. Y'all are gonna leave me alone, okay? I will not be bullied on this channel. I will not be bullied on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Use me, I also can't tell people when I'm on drugs or when they're just prostituting either. When people point it out, I'm always like so surprised. Okay, well, prostitution. Yesterday while walking the strip, I said to myself, these hoes is out tonight when a bitch is in heels walking down Las Vegas Boulevard slow with a short dress on. I know that. Because I seen that once in New York. I was walking and this girl was like, Pulling down her dress. And I said, in New York City, bitch, get it, get out of my way. I mean, it was late at night. And I was like, why is this person slowly meandering down the street? And the man I was with was like, why she on the stroll? And I said, word, word. Yeah, so now I know, okay. <laughs> What's on <like> me? <laughs> Ah, oh, I said, okay, I get it now, I get it now. There's a few people with receipts. Ooh, haha, interesting. Queen Francine says, it's true. <laughs> Dante knows she's high and wants to save her. Oh, so sad for him, he's such an... All you saw was tracks? No, I didn't notice that. <sighs> wow, didn't know that. Okay, well, naivete, 
coming through. Um, so anyways, now that I know they're on drugs, I wish them the best. But I was really concerned about this scene right here. I didn't know what was going on. And and uh, Tia's like, man, this is so childish. Like, is that the thing now? Is that the thing for people to say things like childish and immature? Like, this is childish. This is immature. And situations don't even be childish nor immature. <laughs> like... They just be petty for sure, but they're not necessarily childish. Like, girl, what are y'all talking about? I can't wait to take these braids out. I keep touching them because, like, many of them are holding on by a thread. You know what I'm saying? Like, all the hair around them has either slipped out or broken off. I cannot wait to take these braids out. But I don't have a plan to do anything with them right now. So they got to stay in at least until I get home because I'm not going to be in Vegas with my natural hair, girl. She didn't bring a wig. And I love the way I look with braids. I think it makes me look prettier. Okay. Um, anyways, are we done? Who else is there? Oh, please tell me we're done. We're done. We're done. Yay. All right, you guys. So that is the end of this episode. 277 people in this room. Um, how many likes do I have? Do I at least have a hundred likes? Someone tell me. Ooh, good call. Chantel says Lisa is Nicole in 20 years. That is true. You're right. 91. Okay. I'm feeling it. If I could get nine more, that would be awesome. 97. All right. Thank you. I really do like gold. Uh, gold peach. I've never seen you before. Hello. 97. Thumbs, 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 thumbs it up. Thumbs it up, thumbs it up. I said thumbs, 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 thumbs it up. Thumbs it up, thumbs it up. Thank you. Oh, 101, I'm satisfied. I wanna thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for joining me in this live. Um, I wanna talk about RuPaul's Drag Race, but I have to go meet somebody for lunch, brunch. Oh, I'm so excited to eat. And then um, I'll be back. And then maybe I'll go to that place that they told me to go, Sam's Town. And then, oh, I didn't write it down. Vicky, can you um, tell me again what it is? I got to write that down. You said Sam's Town and Boulder something? Those people from Vegas, tell me what it is. Sam's Town, I do remember that because I looked it up. And what is it, Boulder? Thank you, Chelsea. I'm gonna go live tomorrow um, and talk about 90 Day Fiance, obviously. So I'm gonna go live early because I have to I have to watch it. So I have to get up, watch it, and then go live. And then I have a show. I think I'm gonna get ramen at like noon with somebody. And then I have to, I'm gonna go see an all mo all woman Motown review. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I love to go to shows and sing. And then um, yeah. So maybe, I don't know, I'm going to karaoke tonight for sure. Sam, a Boulder Station. Boulder Station. They're not fancy, but they're local stomps. Yeah, yeah, I don't need to be fancy. I just want to win something. I just want to feel like I've won something. But I don't know, just maybe it's just me and Blackjack. I like to play the Blackjack table. I'm not going to play the slots. What do you play, Vicky? I did play roulette, which is like, I mean, you could lose so much money at roulette. <laughs> if you're playing with dollars, like I could see it. Like if you get $50 and they give you 50 ones and then I just see the, the whole thing about putting it on a specific number doesn't make any sense to me. Choosing red or black or a quadrant of numbers or like a line of numbers makes the most sense. But it's like, you really don't win anything unless you play big, right? But then it's like really hard to get the thing. Anyways. <clears throat> Let me know what you guys play if you want to. I like roulette and blackjack. These places have lower limits. Play the corners on roulette. Okay, play the corners. Play, I don't know what that means, but I'm asking them what that means. Play the corners. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I don't know how to play this game. I need to play the corners. Can you tell me what that means? Is that where you put it on the corner, like in between the things so you can get the rows? Why do you have to play with other people's money? Get some old white man to give you money. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, how do I do that? Uh, 
I don't have the clothes for that or the temperament. That's the reason why I couldn't be a stripper. It's honestly because I do not have the bullshit. I don't have the bullshit temperament to, to talk to people, especially if their breath smells. Oh, well, you know, to be a stripper or to be a woman who's in that industry, you've got to be able to finesse and talk to any type of man. And it's not me. Oh, you're right. Stan is perfect for that. Stan is perfect for that. <laughs> uh, just build your bank by playing corners. Also, you can win at bingo. Ha ha! Bingo. Let's try that. That sounds fun. Like, I don't know how to play bingo. Like, I'm like, bingo. <laughs> how do you play that? <laughs> Chelsea, you're great. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's the end of this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for being here today. I want you guys to have a fantastic evening. Remember to be you, be true, and find your place. Bye. If you guys are in Vegas and you wanna hang out, hit me up on Instagram. Thanks, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.